All right, so we're back, and as you can see, I have done more work on the, uh, on the painting that we were working on yesterday. <coughs> um, hi, Sissy. And I, I did a lot of work on Ned's flush tone, and I have reached a place where I get in a lot of my paintings. Um, where I've I've screwed up and have to stop. Um, basically, uh, I put down wet paint in the shadows. I put down wet paint in the highlights. I did some blending that came out well, but I've gotten too much light into the dark. And when you want to uh, start saying, okay, I need to make that darker again, you're gonna have to wait for the paint to dry because you can just put more dark paint and more dark paint and more dark paint into here and it'll just keep, keep turning uh, chalky and white and you'll just get the soup that you have to wait you know six days for it to dry or something so um, I should be able to work on this uh, later this evening if I was inclined which I probably won't be but um, by tomorrow morning no problem I'll be able to go in and and darken all those shadows and get it back where I was hoping to be. So uh, that's that for that for the moment. I can't really do a whole lot. We're going to do something entirely different. Sissy says something. I won't be able to stay the whole time today, but at least I'm on time. Okay. All right. We'll give you partial credit for today. Um, thanks for coming. Um, so what I have here, uh, I've got my little computer, um, which doesn't have a whole lot of memory, so I can't put like all my pictures because <laughs> I've got a lot of pictures. Um, but, uh, I've got a set of pictures that I took, of uh, one of our models, I don't think Sissy ever met her. Uh, she was before your time, um, but she was a uh, model for us a lot. Pretty reliable, good model. Somehow a very, very uh, extremely skinny and still muscular and cut and defined, you know, um, not just a skinny bone type of skinny, but a natural kind of skinny. Um, I'd rather, uh, I'd rather they were not so scrawny, but um, was, she was certainly good for, uh, for the teacher to use uh, for his anatomy class, because you could basically see all of her muscles and all of her bones, <laughs> and uh, so she made a good uh, uh, anatomy model. Um, and a few years ago, she, yeah, I had probably a better rapport with her than with any of the other models we worked with at the time. So, um, feeling somewhat uncertain about myself, I, I asked her if she would come to my house and model out in the backyard uh, just for photography for a bunch of science fiction, fantasy kind of ideas um, that I had. And basically I had a whole bunch of just little quick sketches, things that had occurred to me. Um, and uh, I would have her kind of act it out. I would show her the sketch, tell her what it was supposed to represent, and uh, have her kind of act it out and uh, do the pose. And I would take a few shots and uh, take some pictures. And you know, I had some cool things to work with. Um, not to denigrate, uh, she, she was really good. I really, um, 
you know, fun person, fun person to work with and all that kind of stuff. She has a, a very, uh, she has a very poised kind of way about her. And so, and I had a, a digital camera. It was actually much slower than my cell phone camera now. Um, you know, it ran on a couple of uh, AA batteries or something, and you would take a shot, and it kind of had to sit there and charge itself for a few seconds and be ready for another shot. So you couldn't go click, 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 click. And, um, and it, I really needed a camera that would do that because this model would, she would act out what I told her to act out. You know, like uh, I would say, you're walking along with your sword, and you hear a noise behind you. So you're so you're spinning around, going, you know, kind of like, what was that? You know, and so she would spin around, and it was perfect. And and you know, I'd pop off a shot, and then go, oh, that's not quite right. And I I'd, I'd try to get another shot, and then she would kind of like pretty her way into the pose. You know, uh, <laughs> so by the time I was ready <laughs> to uh, fire off a shot with the camera, um, she was looking too much like a model and not like, you know, a cave woman with a spear who was about to have a fight with a saber toothed tiger or something. So. Nevertheless, I got a bunch of good pictures. Long enough ago that I was still kind of hoping that I was going to, you know, that I was just on the verge of impressing an art director and I was going to get some illustration jobs. I did impress art directors. They would look at my portfolio. They would ignore all the sci-fi fantasy stuff and find the part that had all my signs and my murals and my theme party decorations that I made. They go, that's the coolest stuff I've ever seen. I have no use for it, but it's the coolest stuff I've ever seen. <laughs> and I had several art directors that you know, were very, very impressed with um, that aspect of me which i mean that made sense because that's what i did for a living so i was actually pretty good at that um the illustration um i wasn't good at it I, because i didn't do it now <laughs> but uh that was that was what this project was about with me um and uh, Sissy says, the painting looks really awesome, by the way. Thank you. Um, Sharon sent me a pumpkin. Thank you for that, too. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm liking the painting. I, I am. Um, there's a more simplistic approach where I was, that I was thinking I was going to do. I'm going to hold up the painting. Um, I was thinking that I would get to the point where like this was about all I was going to do in the dark aspects of this guy's face and then I would come up come in and hit the highlights of the critter uh you know so say his skin's going to be a little bit yellowish green or something I don't, I don't want to paint the whole thing from head to toe yellowish green um I want to leave those shadows about where they are and just hit that yellow green on the top of his cheek, on the top of his brow, on the top of his nose, on the top of that lip, and um, and then kind of leave it alone. That's a little rougher and less polished than what I started doing here. I kind of got carried away and was doing something else, and now I've made Ned look like the State Park Marshmallow Man because it's overworked and overblended. And that's a thing that I do a lot. So um, when that's dry, I'll darken those shadows and then I'll come in and, and uh, hit those highlights again and hopefully get more of the, the kind of look that I just described. It's, 
it's just how I pictured this painting. It's not like there's one way to paint. It's just a way to paint. That's how I intended to go about this one. And then you go and you put something else in the middle, the focal point that's painted in a completely different style, and then that's not going to work. And you get a, then you're committed to to doing all the rest of them, you know, you know, super polished and and uh, this isn't how I wanted it. So anyhow, uh, that's that. We'll see what happens. Um, that little sh that little uh, thing that I just described is a struggle that I have <laughs> gone through on a bunch of paintings. I won't absolutely say all of my paintings, possibly all of my oil paintings. Um, that that uh, what I was trying to do, I used to do pretty well in acrylics. Just a little too rough, a little too unblended. Um, but uh, but I used to do that. I might show sometime soon uh, some Halloween decorations that I made. I've shared them before, but uh, I made some Halloween decorations one year. It was one of my genius plans that was going to make me a millionaire. I had a bunch of wood scraps and various things that I had salvaged, and I I cut out these uh, funny looking creatures in uh, in wood. I had ghosts and goblins and pumpkins and skeletons and the Grim Reaper and Frankenstein and vampires and werewolves. Black cats, and spiders on a big skeleton, on a big uh, pumpkin, and uh, all kinds of stuff. And I painted them in that kind of style. Basically, painted everything almost black, black in the shadows and white in the highlights, and then went in with colors on top of the white, and built it up. It was a really cool process and it worked super well and it looked great and everybody told me they were just positively wonderful. Can I have it for free? No. You want money for them? They're not that good. Damn near. I, I did eventually get rid of them off, but uh, I don't know. I gave some to the neighborhood kids that wanted some, and uh, I, I eventually sold them really, really cheap. Probably if I'd had a venue and you know some time. Any work to get around. I did, I did essentially a yard sale in the front yard. I had a one guy I had done some uh, sign painting for, so he had a place out on the on a busy street, and uh, I don't know what. I, I guess maybe I just told him about him, or I had uh, had one in the back of the car. I don't remember. Anyway, he said. I said, bring them here and, and sell them out in the front yard of the, of the business. And so I did that, and you know, I sold a few. But anyway, apparently I think they're cooler than, than everybody else. But I thought they were really cool. One thing about stuff like that, it's hard for me to wrap my head around, but Halloween decorations, Christmas decorations, and all that kind of stuff, a lot of people do not keep them. They'll spend whatever they're going to spend. 
do the decorations, you know, decorate the yard with the fake uh, gravestones and everything. And they've got the cackling, you know, animatronic guy going, oh, 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 oh. and uh, and that all goes in the trash on, on November the 1st because they don't have any place to store it. And they don't want to store it. And, you know, it's going to be beat up by next year, even if they do store it. And so, um, yeah, all that stuff's in the dumpster by uh by november 1st and so and you've got cool looking halloween artwork and the guy wants 50 dollars but he'll settle for 35. okay 20. 15. and they're like i could go to walmart and get a real thing <laughs> For 15 and throw it away on Monday, and uh, you know, that's what they do. I used to get that from time to time. I could get a real sign cheaper than that. I was like, really, a real sign? No. Oh. Where do you get that? Some catalog where you can buy some damn paper sign <laughs> or something from from uh, Staples or something like that, and, and uh, I think it's it's a real sign. So even though it's only two feet long, my stuff should be cheap because mine's just painted, not a real, not a real sign, just painted. Those people did not turn out to be customers. Those were the people I wasted time talking to and they finally said, okay, have a good day. Victor says, howdy, howdy, Victor. Okay. Um, and this is, uh, this is something guaranteed.
I inadvertently gave her a cheerful smile. I can't be having that. We'll lose that along the way some here somewhere. It's a color on the page. Maybe she's having fun. Pew pew. Happy to be shooting people. Yeah, could be. Uh, Sharon says, look out, she's got a blaster. <laughs> yep. Um, I, I rarely do science fiction um just happens once in a while um i really set out to do um the big thing that's different about this drawing from almost all of the drawings you've seen me do is that uh I had a science fiction idea. I had a story. When I say story, put quotations around that. Um, you know, girl has got her wall, her wall, her, her back up against the wall. She's got the gun and she's getting ready to pop around the corner and shoot something. Okay, that's my story. Um, and so I had that story in advance of even shooting the model or starting on the picture. That is the proper way to do an illustration. Um, it's not what I typically do. <laughs> what I typically do is take a photo during life drawing class or do a sketch in life drawing class and then try to retrofit a fantasy or science fiction uh, elements into that picture later on and sometimes something like a story seems to kind of emerge as I'm drawing uh, but it's never actually what what was intended from the very outset to my knowledge none of my models were appalled by where I went they all seem to be pretty entertained uh, by it um, as sometimes somebody else in the class would be like, "Oh, don't show them that; they'll they'll freak out or something." But then they would come running over uh, at break time and, and have a look at my at my canvas. What do you do? What do you do? It was embarrassing. There was a a number of guys in the room who could draw the figure a good deal better than I could. Um, there were, at one point, there was at least three people in the room who had taught life drawing class, you know, before. They could name every bone and muscle in the body and, and uh, you know, really understood all of that. And, uh, and then there's me, you know, I, I draw well. Um, not as well as they do and some of them have you know been kind of famous before and you know been in big galleries 
in. Kind of a big deal, these guys. And the model runs right past them and comes over to my seat. And they just see what I'm doing and they look over there. <laughs> There it is. I was having more fun, is what that was. I've gotten this pencil reasonably sharp, as sharp as these things generally tend to get. They won't get a real sharp point on them, or I'm not able to get a real sharp point on them. But you need a pointy point to get in there and shape that mouth when it's, when it's that small. It being the case that it's a sci-fi thing, she definitely needs a pair of boots. This is serious science fiction. Not that not free-free space opera science fiction. She's got boots. You want to know the difference between hard science fiction and space opera. What distinguishes the two? I will tell you. Space opera makes better movies. That's pretty much it. Now, there are some people that are like, no, 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 Star Trek is hard sci-fi. Star Wars is space opera. To which I reply, yep, it makes better movies. That's just my opinion, and it's right. There's a lot of hard sci-fi. I've read a lot. And a lot of it's not very visual. You know, it's like... Uh, you know, how trying to struggling to figure out how to deal with something that turns out to be a 
a sentient virus, you know, that lives on the planet that you're on and, and, uh, you know, just, just learning to deal with, with that and, and, and recognize what's happening, why people are dying, laying in a hospital bed, um, you know, things like that. I mean, there's just, uh, it's, there's drama, but it's not a very visual drama. And it's interesting, but it's not visually interesting. It's conceptually interesting. Space opera, there's going to be laser pistols. And there's going to be robots. And there's going to be spaceships flying around, chasing each other. Chase scenes in outer space. The screeching tires and everything. Bye, sissy. Sissy's got to go. Sissy has gone to a better place. Maybe the grocery store or something.
getting somewhere. It's looking almost cartoonish, um, but it, it's kind of getting somewhere. I kind of like it. I think my basis for what makes something officially look like uh, a space costume is its resemblance to the pair of moon boots that I owned in the 80s for walking around in the snow. They were called moon boots, so, so you know that they're accurate. Should have kept those. I had a pair that had nothing wrong with them. They fit, but I don't have them now. Should I ever find myself saying, oh, I gotta go up there, brisk it, and charge around in the snow? It should be nice to have them. Well, it's been 40 minutes. Um, I'm sort of liking this. It's uh, it's different. It's different. Um, I think I need to cancel here where I can show you what I mean. 
I'm being realistic and putting your hand right at the edge of the door frame. I need to be more illustratorly and put her you know, further. Um, because that gives me more space on the paper to do whatever it is that's in this room over here, which I've left pretty vague because I haven't thought it through. Um, it would be nice to have some idea what she's about to shoot the hell out of when she comes around the corner. Um, but anyway, it does have that sort of tension, has that sort of, you know, she's hiding. Um, some great examples in old uh, pulp fiction novels. Um, I'm not thinking, uh, I'm looking over here at my bookshelf to see how accessible my book is, and it's not. Um, there's a big giant octopus in front of it. And, but um, there's uh, examples, not necessarily sci fi ones, where uh, you, you've got a picture of a robber, right? And just the the way he's dressed, you know, he looks like a, or maybe he looks like a escaped prisoner or something like this, okay? And he's got a gun. And he's, you know, and he's looking around the corner into the diner where the cop is sitting at the counter. And, uh, and then the, the lady, the diner lady, you know, he's, he's got the gun pointed at her, you know, and she's got this look on her face like, ah, and, and she's pouring the rat poison in the, in the coffee, you know, so she's being forced to poison the cop so that this guy can uh, get away and the cop's oblivious to the fact that he's hiding out in the back of the diner. And I mean, you can put all this together in this whole, you know, this very, um, uh, simple but very straightforward uh, picture, and um, I like that. I like the fact that you can just kind of go, "Oh, this is going to happen to here, and that's going to do that." And how's this going to work out? Um, probably the cop is going to take one taste of the rat poison coffee and spit it out and go, "What the hell are you serving me?" <coughs> <coughs> At least I would think. Um, it's Tuesday. I'll be back tomorrow at three o'clock. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye, guys.